data sampling. So data sampling is a statistical hypothesis technique used to select, manipulate, and analyze a subset of data to discover hidden patterns and trends in a larger data set. So the sampling theory can draw valid inferences about the population parameters on the basis of the sample results that we've analyzed. So obviously, we can't analyze every single individual on every single thing in the entire world population. Not everyone is going to take a 40,000 question survey. So we try to create representative samples. So we might use males that are similar to my age and build a subset of data and push that out to a few hundred or a few thousand people for that survey and draw inferences that that population will reflect other males that are similar to my age. Now, there's always chances of errors in sampling. Consider the following scenarios. So quality inspector accepts or rejects a hardware component supplied by a vendor, generally on the basis of test results of a random sample. Well, the manufacturing plant could have had a single bad batch, but if that was the sample that was tested, the assumption would be that everything is bad. So even if only one box out of 100,000 was bad, if that's the one that was subsampled and the only one that was subsampled, then the assumption would be the other 999,999 boxes are also bad. You can also have a bank accept or reject a loan on the basis of a random sample of test results of loan payback with interest and tenure. So if you've ever applied for a loan or credit card, they're using models, they're using algorithms that are based on similar characteristics to you. So if you've never opened a loan or credit card with a specific bank, they don't know anything about you. So they have to use other individuals as proxies. So they would look at things like your FICO score and how it compares to other FICO scores and the and if they're likely to pay back or not based on your FICO score, as well as your age and gender and a variety of other variables. That doesn't mean that you would or wouldn't be able to pay it back or would or wouldn't do so. But because we don't have an entire population, we can never be certain now. In such cases, statistical decisions are taken on the basis of evidence and try to provide complete confidence to reduce the chance of error. There are two primary types of error in statistical decisions. There's type 1 error and type 2 error. These tend to be very confusing, so please don't be overwhelmed. You may often mix them up in your head. That happens. No matter if you're a first-time student or a postdoc, most people tend to mix them up at some point. So a type 1 error is rejecting the null hypothesis when it's actually true. And that probability is denoted by Cronbach's alpha. You can see the Greek letter A. Type 2 error is accepting the null when it's wrong. And that probability is denoted by beta. So we say in practice a type 1 error means rejecting a lot when it's good. And type 2 error means accepting a lot when it's bad.